Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this next batch of rapid fire. The camera will be off now because my computer is too hot for it to do it. So let L1 equal 1, L2 equal 3, looks like terms of a sequence. Let Ln plus 2 equal the sum of the previous two terms. So this is the next term. That's the previous term to that one. And this is the previous term to that one. So we want the sum of the two previous terms. We're going to say that it's 1, 3, and then 4, and then 7, and then 11, and then 18, and then 29, and so on. Okay. For how many terms in the sequence are, how many of them are even? Well, I mean, it's, it's all odds and even. So you just use properties. Odd, odd, even. Odd, odd, even. Clearly, every three, two of them are odd and one of them is even. So if I can find how many groups of three are in here, and the nearest multiple of three is 2022, um, 1,011, uh, well, I, mean, I don't even know. 2,010 is three times 670, just from past competitions. I remember that. So three times four more, 674. There's 674 groups of three. And so in every group of three, you have one even, only one. So the answer should be E674. Uh, do be careful with these. Make sure you go back and double check. Okay, we got every third term is even. So the last term in each of my groups of three is even. Then the next thing we're gonna do, clear screen, and go to problem seven and start it. Square ABCD is rotated 20 degrees clockwise about its center to obtain EFGH as shown below. What is the degree measure of EAB, that angle? I'm just gonna zoom in. It's 20 degrees rotation clockwise about its center. So uh, the thing about rotations is the distances from a point to where it's new point remains the same. Meaning whatever A is to the center, this distance will be the same. And that's probably where you should start because that's where you're rotating it around. So at that point, it says it was 20 degrees, that's 20. This is an isosceles triangle. So immediately you're gonna jump into 20 degrees off of 180 is 160 remaining. It must be 80 and 80. So the angle right here is going to be 80 degrees. And you know because you connected A to the center that you are basically taking, right, when you take a square and draw the diagonal, you have 45 degree angles. So this angle right here is 45 degrees. All we have to do now, 80 minus 45, the answer will be 35 degrees. I'm gonna clear screen and show where that is. That's answer choice B, seven is B. Okay, uh, clearing screen and going forward. Number eight, what is, it's kind of easier to flow this way without having to erase and start all over again from each video, I kind of like it. Uh, what is the units digit of 2022? Units digit is just basic number theory you only have to focus on this too. None of these affect the units digit. That's intro to number theory. Very, very basic level question from intro. All you're going to do is take that two. And if you haven't done that book, I highly recommend you do intro to number theory from the art of problem solving, um, either with a teacher or on your own. So two to the first power is two. All of them are going to have a pattern that develops. So two squared is four. 2 to the 3rd is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16. But again, we only want the units digit. We don't care that it's 16. When I multiply this by 2 to get the next one, I don't. this doesn't have an impact on that. That's why if I double just the 6, I get 12. Only the units digit affects the units digit. So you're going to get 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6 groups of 4. That means that at the end of every cycle of four, it will be a six and then it will reset. So you're at the 2023 power, which means you're at the 2020 powers, the nearest multiple of four. You can go forward three terms, one, two, three, and get to eight. Or you could say 2024 would have been a six, but we never got there. We stopped at eight. Either way, 
you're going to get eight for that portion. So you're going to have eight plus. It's some big number that ends in eight. We are basically modding out that number to get its units digit. So now we're going to go and look at the 2023. It's the same exact game. It's going to be that you take three to its powers. Three to the first, three to the second, three to the third. I'll write the whole thing, three to the fourth. But the only thing we care about is 3971. The next one's 243, but it's the three that we care about. So you're going to have the same thing. Every four terms, a repeated cycle. So we're going to go to uh, 2020 is the nearest multiple of four here. That will be at this one. And you're just going to go forward to one, two. You'll be at that nine, some number that ends in nine. When you add a number that ends in nine with a number that ends in eight, you're going to get a number that ends in seven, like 17. So the answer will be A. Number nine now, let's get started on number nine. The numbers 16 and 25 are a pair of consecutive positive perfect squares whose difference is nine. Uh, this, it, How many pairs of consecutive positive perfect squares have a difference of less than or equal to 2023? This is textbook, small notebook concept. I talk about it a lot of times in other videos. The statement is the difference in consecutive squares is the sum of their bases. The difference in consecutive squares is the sum of their bases. So for example, this is four squared and five squared. And when you sum the four and the five, you get the nine that they mentioned. So all we need is two consecutive numbers that add to this 1,011, 1,012. And you might think, okay, I group these in two. One, two is a group of two. Three, four is a group of two. And I've got, since I got 1,012, you say, oh, I've got 506. But that's not here. Why? Because it's not just one, two. I can also bridge the gap between them two, three. So I've got the group of one, two, the group of two, three, the group of three, four. And in fact, what we see is that the first number counts. The first number is counting for us. And since we end on this one, it must be 1,011. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get to this number 10. Uh, a two by one rectangle covers two adjacent squares oriented either horizontally or vertically of a three by three grid of squares. So I'm going to make a three by three grid and go down here and here and across. And we're going to be placing a two by one rectangle in there. Uh, two adjacent squares. Okay. Uh, but you were not told which two squares are covered. Okay. Um, so it's basically, it's, you're not able to see it. Your goal is to find at least one square that is covered by the rectangle. A turn consists of you guessing a square after which you were told whether or not uh, that square is covered by the hidden rectangle. If you understand what's happening, this is essentially the game of battleship. Uh, you can buy that at any box store, Walmart, Target, whatever. A uh, very famous game uh, where you, you your opponent can't see your side of the board. You place your ships and then you guess where their ships might be. You try to put them in interesting configurations to disguise what's happening or where the ships are located. So uh, what is the minimum number of turns you need to ensure that at least one of your guest squares is covered by the rectangle? And this is kind of a trial and error thing. What I did in the live solve, because it's also on the AMC 12. What I did was, uh, one second. Um, what I did was I went ahead and tried the center first. And when you try the center, uh, you don't really get much luck because you haven't really blocked out so many things. There's there's the two on the upper left, the two in the upper right, and there's going to be two on every side. So if I wanted to try to like stop these two, I'd probably pick this corner because it also stops this one at the same time. But the problem with that is it doesn't stop this one. So then you'd also have to pick this corner and this corner and this corner. Or if you went and did the one here and then you went up here, 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 here. Both of those require five. And that is there is an answer, but there are lower ones. 
And so we might think, what if I don't use the center? Usually you want to go for the center in tic-tac-toe. So here we're just going to guess, what if I don't go to the center? What if I try this, this one, this one, this one, and this one, that's four. And that doesn't allow any two space rectangle to exist. And you're not going to be able to do it with three. You can try, but you won't succeed. The answer is four. Okay, so we're going to stop here, stop recording, and... Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will try to get back with the 11 through 15 here very shortly. Um, don't forget to check out the AMC 12 live solve if you haven't had time yet.